I'm sorry is what I say before I write the poem and feel like there is no space for my feelings here without giving them a name, a rhythm, a purpose to entertain. When my friend killed himself, I did not cry until I wrote the bereavement poem. Did not know how to feel until I colored my tears yellow and called them a sunset. When I lost a friend that year for the second time, I waited for the metaphors to present themselves, for the magic to come and make me feel anything but... I'm used to this now. I sat under my covers and I wrote his name. Marco, Marco, Marco. I remember how we used to sit in physics class and daydream about all of the terrible puns we can make for the rest of our lives. Sometimes there's just no metaphor to slap on for everything to make sense. I can't weave my words to make the statistic one person commits suicide every 16.2 minutes sound beautiful. Sometimes there's just no beauty left. No poem to write, no hand to promise you will hold and use to wrench out that last bit of life from you. So when I say, imagine a safe place, like it's made for you, you will not scream here. I'm not a poet. I am a lost friend, someone who's been there before, who is so scared of watching everyone she loves turning to bones. I forget that sleep is not a metaphor for death, that when your friend sits you down and says, sometimes I just feel like dying, it is not a simile. Disease is a crisis that I am all too familiar with, and it is no gleaming moon or sack full of daffodils or Tumblr post by sad girl 101 exclamation point. But I get it. It's so hard to say that for a month I did not leave my bed and dreamt me far away in a place I cannot name for you. My friends tried to twist out any last drop of magic hiding in me, find evidence of the girl that people once called a bundle of joy, but under dirty underwear and damp pillowcases, they found nothing. My body, built out of temperatures, cannot be named a poem. My depression is not a metaphor, no matter how many times it makes space for itself in my writing. No matter how many times I write this into someone else's body, anyone's, but my own, please. Sometimes I just can't be a poet, but I'm not hiding. I'm trying to use my words as bridges to bring someone across that border of life and that other place that neither of us can name right now. I am trying to use my words as hands to reach for help that sometimes I just can't ask for. So if I say, tell me about the dark days, don't turn the lights on. I will hold you anyway, and I will listen. So please, hand me a pen. There's so many more poems to write, hands to remember holding. Real beauty out there, I really ought to see. Thank you. I lost my childhood friend to suicide during my first year at Brown. I was devastated, lost, and even more hopeless when numerous other friends took their lives shortly after. And yet, no one in my community talked about it. Mental health remained something that was only talked about in hushed tones and behind closed doors. Let's change this pattern and make space tonight for us to talk about mental health together. I'm not the only one who's experienced this stigma surrounding mental health. About one in four adults are diagnosed with a mental illness every year. Yet over half of Americans, 56%, have reported feeling uncomfortable discussing mental health issues, even with a friend 
or family member. Our society does not leave room for us to speak openly and honestly about mental health. But I get it. I didn't know how to have productive conversations about a topic that we are conditioned as a society to see as so uncomfortable. My teachers never talked about mental health in school, and every TV show's depiction of mental illness was eccentric and inaccurate. So even though I had personally struggled with depression and anxiety for years, I never spoke about it out loud. I was too ashamed to reach for help. It wasn't until all of those unspoken feelings bubbled into a poem that I was given hope. And soon, I found myself standing at an open mic in a room full of complete strangers, sharing my story through free verse poem. And although I was absolutely terrified, they clapped, I cried, it was the first time I had talked about suicide since I had lost my friends. That same poem was the one I shared with all of you tonight. My poetry, my art, had enabled me to finally begin to tell my story. But what followed in that first night was even more unexpected. The strangers who heard my poem came up to me and began to ask me questions that no stranger had ever asked before. In a kind and genuine way, they asked me about my mental health. A young woman asked me what it was like to lose a friend to suicide. A man approached me in a coffee shop, told me he had heard my poem, and asked me what a panic attack really felt like. Sharing my art sparked conversations that I did not know were possible. To me, poetry has always meant healing. To others, it's music or visual art. Sharing my mental health journey through my art not only empowered me to seek treatment and to grieve, but it also allowed for community members to take part in a difficult conversation through the shared experience of art. Art made the topic of mental health accessible to people, people like you and me. My experience pushed me to bring that accessibility to the greater Rhode Island community. So I started hosting events, using art as a tool to tell the stories of people struggling with mental illness and to create a space where others could really engage with these stories. Art bridges understanding and conversation between those with lived experience of mental illness and those who have never spoken about it before. But others believed this too. And my small events soon became a collaboration, a collaboration that transformed into ARMS. Art to Reduce Mental Health Stigma. ARMS is a nonprofit with the mission to eliminate the stigma surrounding mental health by connecting local artists with all of the resources that they need to host their own mental health art events. Our platform empowers artists to share their art and their stories, to sell their merchandise, and to gain community organizing experience. Our platform is inclusive of everyone in the community, the artists, the local businesses we partner with, and the attendees. We can only end the mental health stigma when we all team up together. In today's society, barely anybody wants to talk about mental health. Perhaps some of you in this room are even uncomfortable listening to me talk about it right now. But ask, ask yourselves, why is that? How do we open up the blinds and invite light into the conversation? ARMS events frame difficult conversations on mental health in an appealing way, because who doesn't want to go to a concert, a poetry reading, or an art gallery? Every ARMS event follows the same basic structure of three parts. 
First, an opportunity for the artists to share their art and their stories. Next, a workshop on creating art around themes of mental health, like an engaging writing prompt or song circle. And finally, an open platform for the attendees to share their own stories, like an open mic. Our surveys have shown that nearly 100% of attendees said that they had fun at our events and that they would come back. According to our most recent survey, over 85% of attendees said that their stigma surrounding mental health has been lowered. And that's amazing. But what's most powerful is how at the end of our events, you can find our attendees hugging each other and crying and thanking us for giving them a space where they feel empowered to share their stories. They walk away with a better understanding of each other, whether they have lived experience with mental illness or not. It's time to end the mental health stigma so that everyone can access the help that they deserve. But this can't be done alone. We need to give people permission to say, I'm not okay today. And we need to give people permission to just listen. Making art together can finally spark the conversations that we've been meaning to have but didn't know how to yet. And ending the mental health stigma can only happen when productive, vulnerable, and empathetic conversations are driven between those with lived experience with mental illness and those who have never spoken about it before. Nearly every American 98% have reported that they believe that there is a stigma surrounding mental health. But we can change that. The bravest thing that I ever did was continue to live and to share my story. Together, we can support others in doing the same. If you struggle with mental illness, try attending a community arts event and speaking openly about your experiences. If you've never spoken about mental health before, try attending a community arts event and just listening to what others have to say. Whether this means coming to an arms event and experiencing our platform for yourselves, or making a conscious effort to normalize conversations surrounding mental health, refuse to let the stigma silence us. Take part in community, conversation, and change. Let's end the stigma together. <laughs>